I think the average age was like 29 or something like that. Something like that. I know in, well, Social Science 101, we had this whole thing where we had to guess the average age. And uh, I remember winning. <laughs> <laughs> and I had bulldozed my, my poor guy partner. It might have been the second year, I don't know. But uh, I had convinced him that I knew these people and I had the inside track. Uh -huh. So I had like, and it was all supposed to quantify our power in the relationship. And I had like 98% of the power. It, <laughs> oh, gosh. As far as teachers go, like I might have served the chancellor, but I didn't really know the chancellor. I've heard people say he knew everybody's name. And he might have known my name, but I don't think of his, a, him as a friend. I took mostly, we had this 633. Right. Well, mine was like 233 because I took all social science classes. Drama was the other three, and I can't remember the last one, although I know I took biology. It was math, because we had to take math. Oh, and so that satisfied it. Right. Oh, no wonder right. I can't remember. <laughs> well, that was one thing I was very proud of, that we had to take all this math as social, yeah. social scientists. But definitely, if I think of my fondest probably memories, it's probably faculty. Absolutely. Like Charlie Lane for me. Yeah. And Jim March, both. Right. Them. Jim March and Charlie and Jean for me as well, because that's the person I worked with the most closely right. as an anthropologist. But I think what was unique about social sciences back then was the fact that, A, March had this vision for the School of Social Sciences that was really unique. He hired young faculty, and he was very egalitarian. Everybody, faculty, staff, students, were on a first-name basis. Right. That was unusual in those days. As I came to understand later, I didn't know any different. Right. Um, because it was small enough, you really, if you hit it off with the professor or you were really liked a subject, they acted as a mentor, helped you choose classes, helped you open up to research opportunities? Uh, well, one of my happiest memories was because of you, because you knew <laughs> Jean and Charlie well enough, so I got to come over for dinner, and I think on your coattails with Peter, and we, I remember having salad. I mean, it's just so clear, because it was just such yeah. a big deal to me. They were on this little island. Right, they might have been living on Lido Island. Lido or? Island, and they had made their own salad bowl, which I just thought was the coolest thing ever. And uh, right. I'm not sure I'd ever had salad for dinner before. <laughs> I, I, I don't think potatoes. I had either. <laughs> yeah. And Jim March had people over to his uh -huh. house, too. So uh -huh. it's definitely different, more relaxed than I'm sure what was going on at most universities yeah. in California. Yeah, and I think it had a big impact on our education because, you know, we felt like we could ask questions easily. We could participate in research and so forth.